This beautiful setting was once the site of a coal strip mine. Look around, trees are thriving. We've established a renewed forest. Not only is the appearance of the land improved, but its ecological health also benefits. So why am I talking about coal strip mines, or as we now call them surface mines, and forests? What do they have to do with one another? Prior to 1977, there were many state regulations concerning coal mining, but no federal law. Some coal companies abandoned the land or left it in an unstable condition rather than plant trees to reestablish the forest. Federal lawmakers stepped in to set up guidelines so that all coal companies had rules to follow for mining. They called the rules the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act of 1977, or for short, SMACRA. So how does that affect you and me? And what does it have to do with this forest? This area was a surface mine. Trees were planted in the 1960s, before the implementation of SMACRA. It was not graded before the trees were planted. It is indistinguishable from a natural forest. Trees benefit us by holding the soil from erosion and removing carbon dioxide from the air. Trees provide wildlife habitat. Trees help conserve water resources. They also provide economic benefits. Trees provide income from high quality timber, like this forest. This offers substantial revenue for landowners and jobs for local residents. Trees are a renewable resource. Fixing the problem of stability was on the minds of the regulatory enforcers as they interpreted the new law, SMACRA. They told the mining companies to compact the soil and then plant trees. What everyone discovered was that the trees do not grow in compacted soil. They generally just die. Unfortunately, in trying to fix an old problem of unstable hillsides, a new problem was created. That problem is, trees do not grow on compacted land. Well, all that is changing. Researchers have discovered ways to take the mine site and again return it to this glorious state of forest. Researchers from the University of Kentucky Departments of Forestry, Mining Engineering, and Biosystems and Agricultural Engineering, with support from Senator Mitch McConnell and Congressman Hal Rogers, have collaborated on research that is producing excellent results. Regulators now understand the importance of this work. Everyone is beginning to realize that planting trees on mined lands is crucial to the future of our environment. Well, it was pretty apparent that the reclamation uh, required under the uh, 1977 law was not working out very well. Uh, what was happening is the land was being packed down to the point where absolutely nothing could grow on it. So this important UK project, which I've tried to help fund by uh, providing four and a half million dollars, has gone in there and loosened up that soil and demonstrated now pretty conclusively over the last 10 or so years that uh, this soil can grow uh, a great uh, hardwood trees of a, of a variety of different uh, types and be um, much more useful uh, restored land through this reforestation project than has been the case with most of these abandoned man, mine sites over the years. It's certainly one of the things we've come to recognize uh, over the last uh, 25 years uh, as uh, we've uh, regulated uh, coal mining under the uh, Service Mining Control and Reclamation Act and with the formation of uh, the Office of Service Mining is that with a strong emphasis on uh, stability, which was a serious problem with all that had been going on, and in dealing with erosion and water control and the like, that we ended up uh, doing some things that weren't necessarily the most productive in terms of uh, reestablishing trees. Well, the forest industry uh, employs over 30,000 people in Kentucky. Uh, it ranks third in manufacturing employment in the state and contributes about four and a half billion dollars annually to the economy of the state. For the uh, past few years, I've secured $2.6 million for the uh, UK vital reforestation research uh, through the U.S. Forest Service. I think it's a very worthy cause. Well, certainly, if we were to look at uh, uh, the old shoot and shove strip mining that occurred in the uh, 1950s and 60s, uh, there were serious uh, erosion problems and serious uh, uh, stability issues, uh, uh, stream damage that occurred from that. But that material on the downslope was great for growing trees. You know, the, the trees did fine, but it was the other problems that were associated with it. And I think we need to be careful that 
as we do things that will promote the growth of trees by reducing compaction that we don't uh, exacerbate the issues and problems related to uh, stability and erosion. After SMACRA was put into place, the regulators were so concerned about making the mined hillside stable that they moved the pendulum from unstable land to overcompacted land for planting trees. When the 77 Reclamation Act was passed, uh, the compaction of soil was, was so hard that uh, the growth of trees was something that couldn't take place. We just had mostly grasslands as we do today. So I think the regrowing of our forest is something that's very important to Kentucky and all of Appalachia. Vast expansions of poor grasslands were created in areas that were once forests. This presented a challenge to a professor at the University of Kentucky, Dr. Don Graves. Well, back years ago, when they first really got into mining, I was sitting in my office one day and a person walked in and said, you know, we can't get anything to grow on mines anymore since we started mining, and can you help us? Well, that was, that was a challenge right then, and we got told, Basically, when I got started, well, that's a waste of effort. I don't know whether you should uh, go out there and try that or not because it's going to be a wasteland forever. But most of us don't believe that. We think that we can, since it started in trees, we feel like we can put it back into trees again for the future. We, we looked at what we knew had, had worked in the past and what, say, uh, they had found at uh, Carbondale in southern Illinois. They found that uh, areas that had been uncompacted in the past now had the highest site indexes in the state for white oak, red oak, walnut, and yellow poplar. Those are the kind of trees that we want to grow, and those are the trees that we couldn't grow. We knew that that was something that we should look at, and that was had to do with the compaction on the areas. We looked at what went on at Powell River, and this is what we were contending with in that we couldn't get any bond releases uh, on these areas and so finally the mines gave up and stopped even trying to plant trees on surface mines which meant that we were going to lose hundreds of thousands of acres of what was forest land in the state of Kentucky, millions in the United States and not have all of the amenities that we look for in a forest condition like water, recreation, etc. Every time we look at the mountains, even when you fly over them, you know, the tops of the mountains, you know, where you just see grasses, it's not where it was before. And uh, we'd like to put it back the way it should be. And uh, by following the initiatives that are spelled out, it makes it much easier for reclamation and putting trees back. Researchers, state regulators, the Office of Surface Mining, the Department of Forestry, and others created a plan that could be used to reclaim coal mines and reestablish a forest. What prompted the development of the Kentucky Reforestation Initiative or Reclamation Advisory Memorandum 124 uh, was uh, largely the issuance of two documents in the spring of 1995. That would have been revisions to 16200, our Kentucky Revegetation Standards, and revisions to Technical Reclamation Memorandum 21. Those two documents did two things. They, they changed the number of species that had to be planted on mine sites as well the, as the type of species that had to be planted on mine sites. RAM 124 is a guidance document. It largely requires the operator to select the proper soiling material they're going to put on the surface. It asks that they minimize as best if po as possible the amount of compaction that occurs. Uh, it asks them to ensure that they select appropriate species that are in fact supportive of the land use they will be establishing. It asks them to ensure that they use good tree planters when they're planting these trees in these sites. Uh, largely that's what's in RAM 124. Or the forestry reclamation approach. In December of 2003, a multi-state initiative was launched. State and federal regulators came together and created a partnership in the seven Appalachian states. This partnership is called the Appalachian Regional Reforestation Initiative. The Appalachian Reforestation Initiative is a partnership that includes seven states who are working together to promote the growth of more high-value hardwood trees on mined land using techniques that have been proven through years and years of forestry research. Some of the benefits that Kentuckians will enjoy from this initiative is 
establishment of a valuable renewable resource on mine lands, enhanced wildlife habitat, improved water quality, certainly additional carbon sequestration capabilities, and the reduction of erosion and sedimentation on mine lands. The Appalachian Regional Reforestation Initiative complements the work we're already doing to restore abandoned and reclaimed mine sites in our Commonwealth. We are proud as a Commonwealth to be a partner in this initiative and will continue to actively promote surface mining reclamation practices that will result in long-term economic and environmental benefits in the Appalachian Coalfield regions. Through this partnership and using RAM 124 as a basis, the ARI team created a forestry reclamation approach. What we have been looking at is the relationship between soil compaction and reforestation success, that is the survival of the trees and the growth of the trees. So we have been measuring certain characteristics of the spoil, certain physical characteristics, and then correlating those to the, uh, to the tree growth characteristics that, that we're uh, seeing here in the field. Spoil is, is really the uh, rock that's been blasted and has been removed to expose the coal. A good forest reclamation approach has five fundamental parts. The first is to create a suitable rooting medium for good tree growth that is no less than four feet deep and comprised of topsoil and or the best available material. The best growth medium will depend on the local environmental conditions. We've also found out that uh, those first few years after planting are very critical uh, for the trees to become well established. And if they have, uh, we've found, oh, four to six feet of loose material, that provides plenty of uh, space for the roots to, to get a good foothold and to uh, become well established. Uh, in those first few years. The trees grow very well uh, in uh, what we would consider what, what we call in the mining in mining terms run of mine spoil. That is a mixture of different types of rock that's typically found in, in the coal fields. Uh, that material being uh, just mixed and, and loosely dumped with a minimal amount of grading generally provides a, a, a very good root growth medium for soil, as, as we've seen here at Starfire. Uh, some of the sites that were planted back in uh, 19, 1997 now, uh, the trees are, are very tall, uh, surviving very well in that, kind of, in that kind of medium. In the steep slope areas here in eastern Kentucky, there's a fairly thin mantle of soil. So uh, roots are, are normally going to be restricted. Now, what they are able to do are to find those crevices, you know, openings, cracks, and, and, and move down into those. Uh, but uh, typically, you do not have a thick layer of soil in this area. Uh, so it's, even it's the uh, natural conditions, although supports trees very well, are not the ideal conditions you would pick if you were going to construct a forest. The second step in the forest reclamation approach is to loosely grade the topsoil or topsoil substitutes to create a non-compacted soil growth medium. There's very little topsoil in this area, so we're primarily covering the area with spoil and then uh, preparing that as a seedbed or as a, as a root growth medium for, uh, for the trees that are planted here. No rubber tire equipment should be used during final grading. Final grading of spoil material should be accomplished with only one or two passes of a dozer. This low compaction technique will actually reduce erosion, provide enhanced water infiltration, and restore the hydrologic balance. And when we have rainfall, the water goes into these small puddles, and we have hundreds of these that are being formed and then the water infiltrates into the ground. So we are, don't have surface runoff, and if we don't have surface runoff, we don't have flooding problems. Same sort of thing for erosion. We see it's a very, very rocky surface. And so when we have rainfall, that rock will dissipate the energy of the rainfall so we don't have a lot of erosion. And that sediment does move, moves basically from these small ridges to these puddles that are sitting all over this site. As you can see, we have very rough terrain here. Some people might just describe it as a pile of rocks. Uh, some might say it's a moonscape. But we need the loose wall like this so we can get the infiltration and we can get moisture for our trees. 
10 years from now, the spoil will break down and become soil and start looking much more like a uh, mountainous terrain like we usually see in eastern Kentucky. Dr. Lee Todd, president of the University of Kentucky, has first-hand knowledge of the research conducted by UK at the Starfire Reforestation Project. And one of the most memorable experiences that I had in my first year in office was visiting Robinson Forest and being taken up into an area where they were doing some experiments. It's one of the most visual experiments that I've ever seen, Governor, where they had a very high level of compaction and they modified the level of compaction as it went to the right and the trees on the compacted area were about that tall and as you went to the right they got bigger and bigger and it was a clear indication that there was some good research going on. This low compaction technique allows trees to achieve good root penetration. The research has shown that reduced compaction rates result in superior tree survival and growth rates. Typically I think seedling survival is going to be around 70 percent on average from year to year. Some years we get around 85, 90, and other years it's, it's 60, 70. In the compacted cells, the seedling's average survival rate is 22 percent. The average diameter at ground is six centimeters in the uncompacted cells, compared to the average diameter of 2.3 centimeters in the compacted cells. This dramatic growth rate occurs in all species of trees as long as they are planted in non-compacted soil. What can you change about a mined site that's already been compacted, like this, in order to achieve a result like this? What we found is the less compaction, the better the, uh, the trees grow. Now, in cases where compaction has already occurred, some lands that have already been reclaimed uh, following what, what was thought to be the best practice at the time, we found that if we go back and, and rip those areas, we can improve the physical characteristics and, uh, and nearly approach the same levels of uh, reforestation success as we would have on uh, totally on compacted ground. But, but uh, by far the best way is not to compact it in the first place. Research has shown that dozer ripping can alleviate compaction and increase tree growth but it's less expensive to have never compacted the soil at all. Cross ripping is recommended in order to allow root development in more than one direction. But this is an unnecessary expense that can be avoided by simply limiting final grading to one or two passes. Research shows that it costs an additional $2,000 of grading cost to produce reclaimed land into hayland pasture use. This, this is not suitable for tree growth at all. And when we get into that shape, then if we're gonna grow trees, we have to change and grow, use some kind of equipment like this to make it suitable for tree growth. The third step in the forest reclamation approach is to use native and non-competitive ground covers. Seeding rates and fertilizer rates should be minimized to limit ground cover competition with the tree seedlings. The fourth step in forestry reclamation is to plant two types of trees early succession species for wildlife and soil stability, and commercially valuable crop trees. In five years, the, um, the hardwoods will probably be, will be three to five feet tall. Some seedlings like ash um, or poplar on a productive site could be six to seven feet tall. The pines will be about the same height. Natural succession of native forest plants and natural invasion by native species also takes place when you use the forestry reclamation approach. We had to grade it many, many passes to get it down to this level. And so that, that is more compacted. This we only took a couple passes over and it's very loosely compacted compared to this side. And then the stuff uh, beyond the, the smaller trees there is uh, 40 to 50 years old. It's even less compacted because it was just dumped in place. And it uh, seems that the, the loose compacted material makes optimum growing conditions for trees. The fifth and final step is to use proper tree planting techniques. The tree planters um, will take the seedlings out of the, out of the seedling bags and uh, I will give them a mix of seedlings so they'll have maybe five to seven different species in their planting bag and they will randomly pull these seedlings out of their bag to try to create a more natural look out on the planting site. Um, the tree planter is going to carry probably three to four hundred seedlings in his pack. The seedlings are about 12 to 18, 18 inches tall, maybe five sixteenths in diameter. 
And the tree planter will plant maybe a thousand seedlings a day working nine hours a day. Uh, the method that we use to plant the seedlings is uh, with a hodad and it's a matic-like tool and you're going to swing it in the ground and make a hole about 10, 11 inches deep and slip the seedling in there to get the root in straight and close the hole up tight and step behind it. The way we plant is we pull the seedlings out of the bag and typically the roots are around 9 to 10 inches long and we'll plant them just the way they come. Another problem that tree planters, uh, some tree planting contractors have is that they don't plant the root straight in the ground. They'll plant it in an L shape or a J and so you don't get your planting depth and uh, you have poor survival that way. These are the steps to prepare the land to grow quality hardwood trees. But we also need good water infiltration to reestablish a forest. The University of Kentucky is also doing research on this. What we're looking at is an experiment to measure how much water infiltrates or seeps through these test cells and how fast that water comes out. We're also measuring water quality so we can know what's in the water itself for potential use in future projects uh, that might be related to habitat. Dr. Chris Barton is doing research on stream restoration. Part of the restoration project on the mine site is to look at not only getting trees reestablished and reestablishing the stream systems on those sites, but doing it in a fashion that mimics the natural system. This is an example behind me of an undisturbed system that has not been mined. And we, we try to examine the conditions of this forest and mimic that on the mine site. So not only are we putting trees back on the mines, but we're trying to reestablish the function of that forest, reestablish the habitat, and also we're trying to reestablish the function and the habitat of the stream system itself. But it'll also provide some benefit to the people in the area due to improved water quality, potentially reducing the flooding that occurs on these sites, and also providing a um, a long-term end use of this land with respect to recreational areas and wildlife habitat. So this project at Bent Mountain, it ties into other projects, for example, stream restoration type projects where we want to go back and look at recreating a stream because we need to know how much water's coming out and how fast that water comes out so we can decide how big that stream should be. Also for habitat, we want to know what's in the water because that's going to affect uh, the bugs and the fish that will live in the stream. When you have recreated a good water system and planted a forest, then you have created a new habitat for wildlife. The Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation sees this as a, another opportunity to create better wildlife habitat uh, in East Kentucky, across all, all of coal country, but um, with the elk herd in Kentucky, 4,500 animals. Uh, our radio telemetry data shows us that they spend a lot of time on reclaimed mine lands and by using these techniques that this, this initiative uh, promotes can create better habitat for elk, but a lot of other wildlife too, grouse, deer, turkeys, uh, a lot of songbirds will benefit from this type of work. Trees are also a consumer of carbon and you can also start looking at carbon sequestration because power plants generate a lot of CO2. This takes the carbon out of the air and stores it in the trees. Our economic benefits are with proper management, timber values should increase. Taxes can be reduced for landowners if they use land in these ways. Having more forest land can enhance and create more tourism, outdoor recreational activities. Reforestation provides an economically viable post-mining land use option for landowners and mining companies. That it also not only uh, uh, brings back the forest in Kentucky for the future, but I think it also uh, helps build a strong economy by being able to grow the hardwoods that we're going to be able to grow in the looser compacted soils. So I think it's a very important initiative not only to the mining industry but also for the environmental community and all of those that are involved and especially the economy of, of eastern and western Kentucky. It should be conducive for uh, some of the tourism uh, emphasis that the state would like to have in the uh, uh, particularly in eastern uh, Kentucky, it seems like I've heard more about that. It's some possibilities. Better landscape after mining uh, has got to be more appealing to attract tourists, uh, new industries into the region. 
and uh, eventually I think there will be it will enhance the timbering industry of eastern Kentucky if we can get trees uh, that are going to grow well more quickly than we've had in the past on these mine sites. That's got to have a positive economic influence. The Commonwealth of Kentucky and the nation need coal energy. Over 50 percent of all electricity in the U.S. is generated by coal. We must work together to use our resources wisely and as closely as possible recreate the land and water as it was before mining. The energy strategy recognizes that the reclamation of active and abandoned mine sites must be part of our commitment to responsibly develop Kentucky's energy resources. How do we implement this idea of the forestry reclamation approach? I think it has to start before the permit. It has to start with your property people and your land people because with your property people they have to be able to explain it to the owners of the land. Most of the property that is in East Kentucky is leased from individual property owners even though the mineral companies own vast tracts of mineral and they have to have a desire to have trees back. Reclamation is a continuing investment in our long-term future and the return on that investment will have a positive impact for generations to come. A benefiting future generations. That's, that's where it's really going to come in because it's our, it's our kids who are really doing this for. It's uh, not for us today. We need to uh, uh, reconsider some of what we've done in order to make sure that we can have that productive hardwood forest. It's a win-win-win situation. I think anybody who's uh, concerned about the environment would be excited about the prospect of uh, returning this land um, much more uh, clearly. In some ways, it's going to even be better than the land was originally uh, with this great uh, timber on it. This uh, research initiative to study the uh, Appalachian surface mined areas and its effect on hardwoods is a long-term effort, of course. It will take many years, but provides a significant benefit, I think, to future generations. In addition, this research could change the standard reclamation process in the Appalachian Mountain areas, uh, which makes it currently very difficult to uh, plant uh, trees uh, in, in ground that's compacted uh, so as to uh, prevent runoff. Uh, and uh, so it's important in the reclamation of, uh, of, of mined areas in the Appalachian Hills of Kentucky. Uh, both on the banks and on mountain top removal, that the uh, trees be able to be planted in uncompacted soil uh, so that they will grow. I hope people remember the work that we've done here when they see the trees that are growing in the future that I won't get to see. When they see the wildlife, they see the clean water, they see less flooding in the areas than what they've seen in the past. And these are, uh, uh, along with the recreation, and the other good things that they'll get out of this in the future and realize that there was a lot of work that went in from some of us to produce this for them. And we enjoyed every bit of it. By working together, state and federal government agencies, the coal industry, landowners, university researchers, and local citizens can create highly productive forest land on reclaimed mine sites by using the forestry reclamation approach. Be a part of the effort to reclaim the future.